Oh, misses, misses something once again. The drop kick though misses as well, and what a super kick from Sumo. Four hundred and forty pounds crashing down on the mean bean machine of Corey Kerr. Cannot be fun times as Sumo starting to take control of this match. Oh, again, Corey Kerr getting a big reversal there. Directly in front of the ref. The ref was looking right at it. Definitely not the best refereeing I've seen. Oh, it's got to be the hugest seated senton I've seen, though. Sumo, three huge punches in a row, but then he gets arm dragged by Corey Kerr. <coughs> and now Corey is starting to get back in the driver's seat, but is it going to be enough? Another big tie-up here, collar and elbow. Sumo off the ropes. Sumo push. Scheiderman, once again, gets eye poked. Oh, the sleeper suplex. And Sumo is out. Sumo not moving. Barely breathing. Pinned by Corey. Two, three. Pinned after the sleeper suplex there by Corey Kerr. Unbelievable move from Whoa. Corey Kerr. Corey and Kerr wait a turning minute. on the referee there. He's just trying to congratulate him after a not entirely clean, but very convincing victor. And now Corey's leaving the ring. He's going up to the top turnbuckle, but it looks like he's uh, heading out of the ring already. He's uh, It looks like he's heading backstage. Corey Kerr, we can confirm, it looks like he's going backstage already, celebrating the win. The crowd not really very happy with that win over Sumo, but man's got to do what a man's got to do, and a man's got to win matches in the MWF. Well, he certainly did that tonight, but uh, not sure if I agree with his methods. Well, uh, are, we, are we rolling? Uh, Corey, you Come over here. Did, did you, uh, uh, Eric, I want to say something. All right. Sumo Scheiderman, Anthony Falcone, sloppy seconds. Really? I'm the FSCW world champion. I am one of the best. This Fed can start respecting me or I'll stop slumming it with these puppy dogs and kitty cats and take my ship back to FSCW. Strong words there from Corey Kerr. Which is to be expected from the world champ. But we're about ready to move on to our main event of the night, is that correct? Ah, uh, yes. Of course, if you are just tuning in for this TV title match between Razor Cuts and our new TV title champion of Peter O.E., who just returned from injury Sunday night, got a big win with that vertical suplex photo over pin, pinning the also returning Gio Cavalcani and taking the TV title. But now Peter O.E., he already looks good, but he's got a Big challenge, Razor Cuts, who just beat the TV, the uh, cha eh, Cruiserweight Champion Sunday night. Razor Cuts would like to have beaten two title holders in two separate nights on the same week. That would make him look very good. But again, if you're just tuning in tonight, the main event about to start, Brandon Ryder is the new CEO of the MMWF. He is the one in charge tonight. Justin Fields, not backstage here at the new MMWF complex at Sports Ohio. The, uh, well, our ring announcer are explaining the rules here. Of course, the rules are extreme rules for the TV title belt. Anything goes. You have to get the pinner of the submission in the ring, but weapons are allowed. <laughs> 
as Peter Ali, the TV title holder, comes out to the ring. Of course, brought to you by Jim Beam Apple. We've got Who You Got, and we're heading up to the social media lounge. Trav, Karan, Who You Got in this match? I mean, I'm taking... I'm taking the JWL guy. I'm going with Peter Owe here. I'm not taking this dude that cheated to beat me on Sunday night. I'm definitely going with Peter Owe. I think that he's winning this one straight up. Social media, though, they tend not to agree with me for some reason. They are going with Razor Cuts in this match. Razor Cuts, of course, probably going to bust out the weapons. Going to take advantage of that. Fight dirty and take the TV title. But back down to you guys. Next one's again, Trap Run. Of course, the uh, Who You Got for the Night is brought to you by Jim Beam Apple, the classic Kentucky bourbon taste you love with a, t with a fresh apple twist. Jim Beam Apple, available at your local liquor retailer. Peter Oli looked very, very good coming back from that concussion. He looked like he was fresh out of training on Sunday night. He did not look like he missed a beat. Definitely a very convincing victory last week there off the floor of floating suplex. That's just kind of the tricky thing that Peter Ali's known for. He's not always necessarily going to try to end the match with his finisher. Sometimes he just has these uh, kind of slick leverage pins that can get you out of anywhere. Mm -hmm. The match not without its faults, though. Um, as you likely saw, it was a brutal match, a lot of ring step spots. Taco Loco uh, actually... Still with our trainers tonight, he uh, was held off the card because of a singer he suffered in his elbow. He will be back next Wednesday for ignition, and he should be cleared to compete. Razor Cuts. Divisive figure. Slowly becoming somebody that the MMW doesn't seem like he can agree upon. Is he just another hardcore flavor of the week? Is he the next big cruiserweight for this fed? Is he just another CZW washout like we saw earlier? Or is he for real? A, whether what you may or may not feel about Trav Caron's fashion accessories, did Razor take advantage of Trav's goggles to win that match? A, a TV title win here, though, would really help his stock in the Cruiserweight division. Absolutely. I can see him holding it for quite a while. This is definitely straight up his alley. I'd say even more so than the Cruiserweight Championship. <laughs> Peter O.E., that TV title champ, Not his first time with the belt. He held it in 2016. And now he's hoping to hold it for an extended period in 2017. But Razor's looking to become the new master of hardcore. Fuzzy's going to move on to that world championship level. Maybe that master of hardcore title could be passed down to him. OE versus Razor, and Razor starts right off with the strikes, grappling him up and hitting a huge neckbreaker. Oh, he had a gut shot there. <laughs> OE <laughs> whipping Razor around the ring now, but he misses that big punch, and that flying forearm goes unanswered. Flip over DDT there. Razor with a neck breaker there. Razor again, like we saw last week, focusing that offense to the head and neck. Akron, Ohio versus Providence, Rhode Island here. You can start to see the reach that the Midwest Magic Wrestling Federation is uh, bringing in. Not just going from uh, Detroit, Michigan anymore. We are going all over the map. Oe and Razor chain wrestling here. Sleeper slam. 
Razor Rover commits there off the punch, but Oe not able to capitalize. And an atomic drop by Razor. Oh. And right there, you see the much stronger uh, just build of Oe, able to hurl him off that front face lock like he's nothing. Oe has a solid 40 pounds on Razor Cuts. He's classified as a light heavyweight, but that's only because that uh, cruiserweight that cruiserweight lines at 205 pounds. If you know that, uh, as you likely well know, uh, Oe's just over that line, Razor just under that line. But last weigh-in, they actually had a 40-pound difference. I, mean, I wonder if Oe put on some muscle mass during physical therapy. Uh, no doubt, he's looking significantly more cut than I'm used to seeing him. His razor looking to be in a little better shape than he was before the uh, hiatus as well. Of course, if we want to talk about looks, we can talk about Razor Cuts' his pants, which of course are coming from CargoPantsDirect.com. <laughs> Back suplex there. And oh, he's thrown for a loop. These two look way more evenly matched than I thought on paper when we started this match. And that's not going to stay that way when the weapons come out because that is Razor's wheelhouse. Even if OE did just win that Extreme Rules match on Sunday, it was a fatal four-way and you feel like OE, who is as opportunistic as anybody, jumped at the right time. Razor's not going to let him do that. <laughs> and out of the ring goes OE. Razor might be starting the hardcore action here or not. OE getting back in the ring. Lots the suplex. Razor's starting to see how dangerous those suplexes can be. I mean, one of them won that match Sunday. As these two continue, we uh, actually have to go back upstairs to the social media lounge real quick. We'll cut back in, but uh, Trap Front is an update on Richard Lamar's condition. Guys, Richard Lamar has been taken to uh, Dublin Rivers, Dublin Methodist Hospital. Uh, he is being checked for lacerations on his head. Uh, he did pass concussion protocol, so they're not checking him for a concussion. They are just treating the uh, wounding on his uh, head and neck area. Uh, back to you guys. As we see a hip toss from Razor Cuts there, uh, not a good update from, uh, well, I guess it is a good update if you think about it, because you don't want Razor getting a concussion here. Well, he's, he's uh, not seriously injured. Uh, certainly may require some stitches, and we uh, wish the best for him, but uh, it's looking like the worst of our fears are, uh, were not realized here. Oh, oh my God. goodness! A dragon screw takedown into the ring steps. It almost targeted the back more than it did the leg. That was good awareness by Razor, keeping an eye on where those ring steps are. And now once again, oh, we over the ring steps. And now Razor's going to get a chance to bring out the great equalizer. Oh, he is about to be in a world of hurt. Oh, he going for a weapon of his own, it's looking like. Can he get that kendo stick out in time, though? Oh, he, he just did. Oh, and able to capitalize. He whacked it over the ladder and whacked the ladder <laughs> into Razor Cuts. Razor taking some cane shots. As you hear the crowd room for Peter Ali. Peter O.E. trying to get that sledgehammer, trying to put this match away. Oh, DDT, nearly onto the ladder. O.E. very fortunate there. That could have been the end of the match. At least the ends of his hopes for winning it. A big bulldog there from O.E. as we're staying alive, and now he's got that toy title belt. Down goes 